The Saab J-35 Draken and the Soviet MiG-21 were both pivotal aircraft in the Cold War, but the unique characteristics of each aircraft revealed not just differences in design and technology, but also in the military doctrines of their respective nations. While the two aircraft shared similarities, such as their delta wing designs and focus on high performance, they were conceived with different strategic goals in mind. The Saab J-35 Draken was a symbol of Sweden's defensive, independent military posture, while the MiG-21 was a cornerstone of Soviet offensive and air superiority strategies. To understand the significance of these two aircraft, one must delve deeper into the socio-political climates, military needs, and technological advancements that shaped their design and their roles during the Cold War. The Cold War itself was characterized by a global standoff between the Eastern Bloc, led by the Soviet Union and the Western powers, led by the United States. In this highly charged environment, military strategies were often based on the assumption that the conflict would eventually escalate into direct confrontation. This necessitated rapid technological innovation and the mass production of high-performance weapon systems. However, while the USSR and NATO countries like the US and the UK were locked in a competitive arms race, Sweden, situated in the geopolitical heart of Europe, pursued a neutral stance, choosing to avoid direct involvement in the Cold War's larger conflicts. This neutrality allowed Sweden to develop a unique military strategy that focused on independence, deterrence, and defense. Sweden's strategic concerns were grounded in its geographical location and its relatively small size. The country's military planners feared that it would become a battleground if the Cold War turned hot, with the Soviet Union potentially invading Sweden as a strategic foothold in Northern Europe. For this reason, Swedish military doctrine emphasized a decentralized defense structure. Rather than relying on a few large, vulnerable air bases, Sweden's air force was designed to operate from dispersed, short runways, and even highways. This would ensure that Swedish aircraft, such as the Draken, could continue to operate even if the main airfields were destroyed or heavily bombed. The ability to take off and land from non-traditional sites was not just a design feature. It was an integral part of Sweden's defensive strategy aimed at making the country's defense network as difficult to neutralize as possible. In addition to this, Sweden's policy of non-alignment meant that the Draken would have to be highly versatile, able to deal with a range of threats that could emerge from the superpowers in the event of an escalation. The Draken's double delta wing design was an engineering breakthrough that made the aircraft a standout in terms of performance and stability. The two different delta wing sections allowed for optimal handling at both high and low speeds, enabling the Draken to execute sharp turns and maintain high speeds without sacrificing stability. The aircraft's fuselage was sleek and efficient, housing a Rolls-Royce Avon engine that enabled the Draken to reach speeds of Mach 2, an impressive feat for its time. The Draken was not just designed for interception, it also proved capable in air-to-air -air combat. The aircraft's ability to carry missiles like the Sidewinder and Falcon missiles, as well as 30mm cannons, ensured that it could engage a variety of enemy threats from bombers to enemy fighters. While the Draken was not a fighter in the same sense as the MiG-21, its combination of speed, maneuverability, and weapons payload made it a capable multi-role platform. In the context of Swedish military doctrine, this versatility meant that Draken could be adapted to various missions depending on the strategic needs at the time. The Draken's longevity is a testament to the aircraft's design and effectiveness. Entering service in 1960, the Draken remained in operation until 2005, providing air defense for Sweden through the height of the Cold War and into the post-Cold War era. Over its 45 years of service, the Draken underwent numerous upgrades, including avionics improvements, modifications to extend range, and an increase in weapons capability. The ability of the Draken to evolve with changing technological advancements and military needs highlighted the Swedish approach to defense, 
adaptability, and sustainability. In contrast, the MiG-21 was a product of the Soviet Union's need to rapidly outpace the Western powers in terms of air superiority. The MiG-21's design drew heavily from the lessons learned during the Korean War, where Soviet pilots, flying MiG-15s, faced off against American pilots flying the F-86 Sabre. The MiG-15's success in the Korean conflict underscored the importance of speed, maneuverability, and firepower in modern air combat. However, by the late 1950s, Soviet military planners recognized that the evolving nature of warfare required even faster and more advanced aircraft. This led to the development of the MiG-21, which would go on to become the most produced supersonic jet fighter in history. The MiG-21's design was a product of the Soviet Union's emphasis on high-speed performance and operational simplicity. The aircraft's small size and lightweight construction made it highly maneuverable, while its powerful turbojet engine allowed it to reach speeds of Mach 2. The MiG-21's Delta Wing design, while not as sophisticated as the Draken's Double Delta, still provided the necessary lift and stability for the aircraft to excel in high-speed engagements. Its small aerodynamic frame made it difficult to detect and track, while its high climb rate ensured that it could rapidly intercept enemy bombers or fighters. The MiG-21's simplicity was one of its greatest strengths. The aircraft was easy to maintain, inexpensive to produce, and could be quickly deployed to forward air bases, making it an ideal platform for the Soviet Union's global military ambitions. The MiG-21's operational history is far more extensive than that of the Draken, and its participation in numerous conflicts gives insight into the Soviet Union's military doctrine. The MiG-21 was a key asset in the Soviet Union's support of its allies during the Cold War, with the aircraft seeing combat in the Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Its role in the Vietnam War, where it faced off against U.S. fighters like the F-4 Phantom, demonstrated its capabilities in both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground roles. The MiG-21 was also deployed during the various Arab-Israeli conflicts, where it engaged Israeli aircraft and bombers. The aircraft's effectiveness in these conflicts was a testament to its speed, maneuverability, and weapon systems. However, by the 1970s and 1980s, the MiG-21 began to show its age as newer, more advanced aircraft, such as the MiG-23 and MiG-29, entered Soviet service. Nevertheless, the MiG-21 remained in service for many years, and its widespread use by Soviet allies around the world ensured that it would remain a central piece of Cold War military strategy for decades. The MiG-21's impact on Soviet military doctrine was profound. The Soviet Union, in contrast to Sweden, adopted a strategy that emphasized offensive capabilities and force projection. The MiG-21 was not merely a tool for defense. It was a weapon designed for rapid engagement and, when necessary, to strike deep into enemy territory. The Soviet Union's focus on global influence meant that its aircraft, like the MiG-21, needed to be capable of engaging a wide range of potential adversaries. This contrast between the defensive, national defense strategy of Sweden and the offensive, global force projection of the Soviet Union highlights the different approaches taken by the two countries in their military thinking. Both aircraft were emblematic of their respective countries' military strategies and represented the apex of Cold War aviation technology in their categories. While the Saab J-35 Draken served as a symbol of Swedish independence and adaptability, the MiG-21 was a representation of Soviet power projection and military reach. In the larger context of the Cold War, these aircraft played critical roles in shaping the air combat doctrines of their respective nations, each contributing to the tensions that defined the era. In conclusion, the Saab J-35 Draken and the MiG-21 are among the most significant aircraft of the Cold War, each reflecting the distinct military priorities of Sweden and the Soviet Union. The Draken's innovative design, versatile armament, and adaptability to Sweden's defensive doctrine made it a standout in terms of both performance and strategic value. 
the MiG-21, on the other hand, was a weapon of choice for the Soviet Union's offensive and global strategies, offering unmatched speed, maneuverability, and simplicity. Both aircraft served as reflections of the technological prowess of their respective nations, playing crucial roles in the shaping of Cold War air combat and military doctrine. Their legacies endure not only in the history of aviation, but also in the lessons they offer about the nature of military technology, strategy, and geopolitics during one of the most tumultuous periods of the 20th century.